You are listening to Tavern Chat. I am Eric Tankar, your bartender in the OSR. So, we were talking a bit about uh, runners written and let the dice fall where they may. And uh, Jason called, left a message, some thoughts on it. So I'm going to step away for Jason. Then I am going to uh, delve into the idea of immersion. And then I got an announcement. So, stepping away for a moment. Hey, Eric. Jason here. Great couple episodes recently. I'm very much a, you know, if you roll the dice, you have to abide by what you roll kind of guy. Don't fudge the dice. But I think your caveat's well worth mentioning that, you know, if it lets your characters die in a blizzard, then, you know, maybe you need to be a little flexible in that don't fudge the dice roll, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah. Anyhow, enjoying the show. I will say I miss your old music. You, you know, maybe it's the Irish-American in me, but I, I do miss the old music. But anyhow, keep up the great work. Talk to you soon. Well, first things first, I had to switch up the uh, the music. And we used that for... God, nearly three years. Time for a change and listen. I love the Irish music. Maybe, maybe some similar will come back, but uh, not yet. Um, and yes, I, I think learning when to uh, step away from uh, run is written or let the dice totally decide, that comes with Experience, you know, and it isn't an all or nothing. You, you got to get there. So, I actually uh, saw that John Peterson had updated Playing at the World, his his blog, playingattheworld.blogspot.com. And John always has interesting stuff when he posts. And uh, he doesn't post often. I mean, heck, in 2019, he only updated that blog twice. Last year, nine times. This year, he's done it four times. So he's on a big pace. But uh, he talked about immersion and role-playing in the 1970s. And it's interesting. Because immersion is like, I don't know, when you, when you find a good book, right? And you read it, and you forget that you're reading a book. You know, you come immersed in the story. Sometimes a good movie can do that, too. Well, role-playing games can do that. And I find that they are better at doing that the more the rules fall behind. Now, part of one of the things he talks about here is that there was also the idea that only the DM or the referee should know the rules. Everybody else should just be playing and not be bogged down by the rules. And I think that's something that the OSR has done uh, that we'll have us forget about is that it's cleared up the rules. And look at something like Swords and Witchery, even Swords and Witchery Light. Four pages, three levels, four classes, right? Four races. Once you know those rules, the rules step back, and it's about the play, it's about the immersion. And that's why I think that those rules are great for convention play. I think conventions are good for two things. They're good for learning new rules, right? Experimenting with a rule set that you have not tried before. Because maybe it's going to be rules that nobody there is really knows well. And you can all kind of, you know, flounder your way through it except for the GM. And again, then that means the rules aren't really holding you back because much many of you don't know it. I mean... When Rach played Time Master with Tim Schneider many years ago at our first North Texas RPG Con, she didn't know the rules. I think actually at the table, the only people that knew the rules were Tim, who knew them well, and myself, who hadn't played it since the 90s. The pace setter system. So everybody at the table got to... Describe what you're doing. And then Tim gave you a role. So you were immersed because the rules stepped back. And I think part of the issue with things like Pathfinder and D&D &D 5e is that the rules 
get out in the way of a lot of it. And that's why I think of some games like, again, Labyrinth Lord, Swords and Wizardry, Swords and Wizardry Light. Um, these are games that the rules step back. They, they step back because they are simple enough that you can recall 90% maybe or more of the rules. You don't have to refer to the books to, or a chart, and the play just plays, right? And I think that is is part of the secret. I love immersion. I think immersion is one of the most fun, exciting ways to enjoy your RPGs and enjoy a good book, right? Because you forget to, on some level that it's a game and it becomes an experience. And these memories become real memories. I think that's pretty damn cool. So if you got a chance, uh, playing at the world, it's the latest post from John. Give it a look. It's a good one. It's got, I'm not going to spoil it for you. It's got some good stuff, and uh, Mike Morales comes and comments, uh, whether you like Mike or not. It's a good conversation going on there. All right, so here's the announcement. Yesterday, last night actually, I announced in the RPG zines. See, I got it right there, so, uh, you know, hey. Those don't like me saying zine, I said zine. There you go. Certain Matt Jackson. There you go. All for you, Matt. Um, I offered to do some fireside chats with those that are launching Kickstarters for Zine Quest 3. Response has been overwhelming, humbling. Uh, I never expected to get a great response like this. So, as it stands right now, uh, I got live streams scheduled for the next eight days. Some of them were already regularly scheduled, but we might have a special guest tomorrow, which would be related to this. Uh, Friday, there was no live stream that was going to be scheduled, so I've got somebody, we're going to be talking uh, Design Quest Project. Got one Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Uh, next Wednesday, uh, Casey Christofferson, Frog Guy Games, uh, has also worked for Troll Lord Games in the past. Uh, Casey has a Kickstarter for Zine Quest. He'll be our special guest next Wednesday. Like I said, tomorrow, 8 p.m., over on Talking Crit. Uh, we may have a special guest. We're trying to finalize it. Um, and then a uh, special guest. Oh, I got another live stream on. Oh, actually, I think next Thursday I don't have a live stream yet. Maybe. But then Friday and Saturday and maybe that Sunday. I don't know. It's a lot of shit. So, now, depending on the length of these live streams, I may double them up. So, the podcast, you might get to hear two fireside chats as an episode. We'll, we shall see. It depends on how, how how these conversations go. I don't want to slam you with like two hour long firesides as a single episode here on the podcast. But if they come in a half an hour, maybe we'll 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 tack two together. We'll see. In any case, if you want to participate, if you want to listen live, if you want to make live comments. Go to tencarstavern.com. Look for today's post. Today is what? Groundhog Day, right? February 2nd, 2021. And I have a list of the schedule of who will be on the live stream at what time. Um, you can catch the live stream at youtube.com backward slash Eric Tenkar, E R I K T E N K A R. And uh, if you're going to listen, please subscribe to the live stream. Subscribe to the channel. All right? Really, it helps. Comments on the live streams help, but subscribing to the channel helps. The live streams make this podcast better and it grows the audience. So one hand, one hand helps the other. All right, folks, on that note, Use your common sense when it comes to COVID. We haven't left the world of COVID. We need your common sense to keep you and your loved ones and your family and your friends and your community healthy and safe. Be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, and uh, 
Knock on wood, God willing, I will talk with you alls tomorrow. Later, folks.